Welcome again to our series, Art and Artists at Dalesford Abbey. I'm Father Andrew Saferni, and uh, I'm going to speak today about some special paintings we have about St. Norbert and his life. This painting uh, was done in uh, 1960 by an Austrian painter named Wolfram Kerbel. Uh, Wolfram, I'm going to use his first name because it's hard for me to get my tongue around Kerbel, uh, was, uh, was, is, he is still alive in, uh, in 2020, a painter in uh, Innsbruck, Austria. We have an abbey in uh, Innsbruck. Actually, the original chapel there goes back to the time of the Romans. There was a Roman camp uh, outside of Innsbruck because uh, Innsbruck is at the base of the Brenner Pass from which one goes from Northern Europe into Italy or from Italy into Northern Europe. So it's a key place in the history of Europe. In the Second World War, it was devastated. It was bombed because of its important, importance as a railway center uh, for, um, for the Germans who were, uh, going back, who were going into Italy. So the Allies uh, bombed uh, Innsbruck, and the Abbey of Wilton was destroyed. But it was rebuilt. It was rebuilt exactly the way it had been as a, a Baroque Abbey uh, built in the middle of the 17th century. Now the challenge uh, was, what about all these paintings, these uh, uh, frescoes in the, in the ceiling of the church and everywhere that were very Baroque. Well, Wolfram emerged as a, a man who could do, do these paintings in a contemporary Baroque style. So that kind of flash and energy and movement. And uh, our priory that had been started in 1954 in Berwyn, what is now the YMCA, it was the original Cassatt mansion, uh, our prior decided he had been to uh, Wilton and he had seen that Wolfram had done all of the paintings in the restored Abbey Church. He did them also in the cathedral. He did them throughout that area, the Tyrol of, uh, of Austria. So his goal was to have uh, Wolfram Kerbel do a complete series of the life of St. Norbert. Uh, the portraits of Norbert, and in a moment we're going to see Augustine, those were the last that were done. The series was never completed. There, were, there are six that uh, we will uh, look at quickly, but I'm starting with the last one, uh, Norbert, uh, in this year in which we're celebrating the nine, ninth centenary of the order. It depicts Norbert as a uh, classic northern European, young European, uh, blonde, uh, and holding a monstrance. Norbert never saw a monstrance. A monstrance came as an element in uh, uh, church uh, vessels uh, in the period of the Reformation, uh, when devotion to the Eucharist was a sign of the counter-Reformation against Protestant um, uh, disbelief in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist. But because Norbert had uh, been an apostle of the Eucharist, through the celebration of the Eucharist as an element of reconciliation, and also his preaching against the Eucharistic heresy of Tonkelm in the city of Antwerp, he was and is seen as an apostle of the Eucharist. So this is, uh, and, and you could see why it may have been done uh, de depicting Norbert. Norbert, at the time of his conversion, was at least in his early 30s. So this is uh, you know, a young man, probably in his 20s, but the painting was done for a house of formation, young men uh, seeking to become Norbertines. So it's a, it's a wonderful piece, and it has a history in our community. So the partner to the portrait of uh, Norbert that we just saw, also painted in 1960, is this uh, really uh, wonderful painting of St. Augustine. St. Augustine is very important in the Norbertine order and in our European churches 
often there's a statue of Norbert on one side, Augustine on the other, because we follow the rule of Augustine. Augustine and Norbert had the same goal, to revive the apostolic life, the life of the early Jerusalem community who were of one mind and one heart in God. So Augustine was, uh, he actually was converted from a life of lust, we might say, and, and through his conversion really became a, a great teacher and preacher about authentic love. So one of the um, elements you often see in depictions of Norbert is the, the flaming heart, the heart of love. He was also, of course, one of the greatest theologians in the history of the church. He, some people say that no one has ever read everything that Augustine wrote, and we know that some of his writings were lost. So he is here with the book. It could be seen as the book of the scriptures or the Psalms on which he uh, dwelt and preached, or it could also be seen as the book of the rule. He is depicted in the black habit of the Augustinian friars. Uh, they're right down the road from us at Villanova. So this, uh, these two are kind of a, a partner set, Augustine and Norbert, key fathers and founders in our community. So Wolfram Kerbel uh, did the two portraits that we just looked at. Those were the last pieces he did for the then Dalesford Priory. The first piece he did, now remember this was going to be a series of the life of Norbert, probably at least 12 paintings. We actually have six. The first, done in 1956, is the conversion of St. Norbert. So we see that elements that we always see in, in this particular event, the horse that has reared up Behind it is the companion who was with Norbert, and here is Norbert thrown to the ground, his hand up, his feet in the air, and coming down are the words from heaven, Norbert, where are you going? That was not a question about you know, the place he was headed to that day, but where are you going with your life? And the story is that Norbert is kind of in a, out of it, a coma, whatever, and then he comes to and he hears the words from Psalm 34, uh, turn away from sin, do good, seek after peace, and pursue it. But what is really uh, very different about this painting is its perspective. It looks like Norbert is falling out of the picture. You need to remember that Wolfram Kerbel was doing the restoration of the cathedral the Abbey Church of Wilton, parish churches, he was doing the restoration of these paintings that were not only on the walls, but in the ceiling, in the vaults. So his perspective was at that time, because the, the, this is the restora time of the restoration of the, the churches that had been bombed in Europe, the perspective is of, of a, as though it were up in the, in the vault. We'll see that, what I'll call vault perspective, in uh, the painting of the legend of Mary uh, giving to Norbert our white habit. So uh, we have a little angel here with the crozier uh, indicating that he's going to be a bishop or archbishop. And Mary has our white scapular, and she's, it's rolled down giving to Norbert. And again, this perspective of Norbert kind of falling out of the painting. It's, again, because of this work that Wolfram was doing in the vaults of churches. A little, little uh, kind of um, uh, very specific point is that the scapular has buttons here, which tells us that's a habit from uh, Norbertines in the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and he's also wearing an almutium, which is a fur cape, sometimes going to the knees, fur inside and outside, and only canons, or canons regular like the Norbertines, were allowed to wear that because it kept them warm in very, very cold churches when they were celebrating the divine, the liturgy of the hours in winter. So it, uh, it was a sign 
that this person either was a Norbertine or the canon of a cathedral. Uh, and you can see here where the perspective is much more what we would say normal. Normal perspective for a, a, a vertical. It is uh, depicting uh, Norbert uh, at, in the year 1126 when he goes to Rome to get the approval of the order. So first of all, it has the Pope with a triple tiara, which would not have existed at that time. And we have Norbert, again, in the habit of a, of a Norbertine from uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. He's wearing uh, a mozzetta with buttons. What he's holding in his hand is the approved charter for the order from the Pope. It has the Pope's seal in it. Uh, again, behind him is uh, someone carrying a cross. This has three arms. Norbert's cross has two arms when he was an archbishop, three arms is the processional cross of the Pope. 1126, Norbert at the, in Rome with Honorius II receiving approval for the order of Prémontré. Uh, this painting still has a little bit of that sense of perspective where Norbert is kind of falling out of the painting. Uh, this is uh, the scene in which uh, the, the life of uh, Norbert says that he received in a dream uh, a vision of St. Augustine giving him the rule, uh, Augustine's rule, which would be the way of life for the order at Prémontré. So uh, Norbert had to decide when he founded the order what rule of life would the community follow. If he wanted the order to be more monastic, he might have uh, chosen the rule of uh, St. Benedict. But he chooses the rule of St. Augustine because that is a rule that was also being taken up by other reformed orders of canons, all of whom wanted to restore the apostolic life of the Jerusalem community. And that was Augustine's goal in, the, um, in, in writing the rule for his community in Hippo. So uh, the last two will be of scenes from the life of Norbert. Uh, this is uh, a scene uh, where uh, Norbert, uh, after cele celebrating the Eucharist, there was brought to him uh, a woman who had been possessed by evil spirits for a very long time. And Norbert, having just received uh, the Eucharist, breathes on her and uh, delivers her from these evil spirits. and. Uh, people who have brought her to Norbert are rejoicing over that. Again, it's a painting that seems to be more vertical. If we followed these in their order, this is one of the later ones, the first were at 1956, so it's more vertical. There's less falling out of the picture than in some of the others. So we're going to finish with one of the more, shall we say, fantastic, uh, events in the life of Norbert, but one uh, which came to be um, identified, the, the image identified with him, but also has something to say about his being perceived as an apostle of the Eucharist. The story is that Norbert is, uh, this is before he has founded the community of Prémontré, he's going around uh, Germany, northern France, looking at examples of reform communities and one of the places he goes is to Rolduc, which is uh, today on the edge of uh, the Netherlands. You can walk into Germany from there. And uh, he was, uh, that had an order, a community of reformed canons regular, and that appealed to him. And while he was there, he was celebrating the Eucharist in the crypt of the church. So it was what we would today say, private mass. Here is the, the server. He has his little bell. And Norbert uh, perceives, after he has consecrated the wine, that there is a spider in the chalice. So probably all of us would, you know, take the spider and out and, you know, uh, wipe our fingers. But Norbert felt that that was disrespectful to the precious blood to go in there to get the spider. So 
you see the spider web, and here's the spider. Norbert drinks the spider, drinks the chalice with the spider, and the story goes that he goes to kneel down after the Mass to pray because he is convinced that he's probably going to die from having uh, uh, swallowed the spider. But he has a fit of sneezing, and the spider is expelled. So it's seen as another part of the faith of Norbert and his deep devotion to the Eucharist. So you've got, in a way, in this series, uh, a little uh, introduction to the life of Norbert, and we hope that that will contribute to your understanding and celebration of the 900 years of Norbertine life. Thank you.